Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. Today, we talk about applying negative harmony to scales that are not the usual major or minor scales. Now, most videos on negative harmony, including mine, apply negative harmony only to the major scale and they flip it around to find the minor scale. Now, can we apply negative harmony to scales other than major and natural minor scales? Yes. Yes, we can. What happens when we apply negative harmony to the scale? This is what we're going to see today. Now, before we start, I want to just give a super brief summary of negative harmony so we are sure we're on the same page. It's going to take just a minute, okay? Negative harmony is just a chromatic inversion. It exchanges the first note of the key with the fifth note of the key and vice versa. To do it, you draw the circle of fifths this way, you split the circle of fifth between the first and the fifth of the key, and you flip the notes around this way. For instance, here we see it for C major, and again, if I apply this to the C major scale and flip around all the note, I find the C minor scale. Here's an important point, though. Some people say that if I flip the C major scale around, I obtain a G Phrygian scale, not a C minor, meaning that the starting note of the scale is not C, but is G. And this is true in the melodic sense, that is, if you are just thinking one note at a time. But in the harmonic sense, that is what our Western ear is more tuned for, what happens is that the first chord of this scale, of the C major scale, which is C major C E G, gets flipped around into the C minor chord, which is the first chord of the next scale, C minor. So since our Western ear is so attuned to harmony, especially to triads, we are going to hear C as the harmonic center of this second scale, not G, because the first chord on this scale here is C major, and when you flip it around, it becomes C minor, which is going to sound like the first chord of this scale here. So, in the melodic sense, yes, this C major becomes G Phrygian, but in the harmonic sense, which is the way we hear, this scale here is the scale of C minor, not G Phrygian. Either way, the important point here is that Negative harmony is just flipping these notes around this way. So what if we do this, for instance, on the C harmonic minor scale? The C harmonic minor scale is C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B. Let's flip around those notes. C becomes G, D becomes F, E flat becomes E, F becomes D, G becomes C, A flat becomes B, and B becomes A flat. If we reorder the notes starting from C, our scale is C, D, E, F, G, A flat, B. This is a known scale, it's not something completely new, and in fact, it's called the C harmonic major scale. This scale was named this way by the composer Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov at the end of the 19th century. I wonder if Rimsky-Korsakov noticed something about negative harmony before negative harmony actually became a thing. This situation is very pleasing, theoretically, it's very satisfying, because if we take the C harmonic minor scale and we invert the scale in negative harmony, we get the C harmonic major scale. So negative harmony connects those two scales together. And inverting a scale in negative harmony, it's supposed, at least in theory, to give us the psychological opposite of the original, that is, to give us the complementary scale of the original. If the first scale sounds happy, the second one should definitely sound not happy, etc., etc. So it's interesting because the C natural major scale becomes the C natural minor scale under negative harmony, and the C harmonic minor scale becomes the C harmonic major scale under negative harmony, and vice versa. And all this is very nice and tidy. What happens, though, if we apply negative harmony, for instance, to the melodic minor scale. Now, the C melodic minor scale is C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B. So, again, let's flip those notes around. C becomes G, D becomes F, E flat becomes E, F becomes D, G becomes C, A becomes B flat, B becomes A flat. When I reorder those notes starting from C, I get C, D, E, F, G, A flat, B flat. 
Now, this scale gets several names. The most common name for this scale is Mixolydian flat sixth, because you see that's exactly what it is. It's a Mixolydian scale in which I lower the six notes a half step. I've heard this scale also called with names like Aeolian dominant or Gypsy scale. This scale also happens to be the fifth mode of the melodic minor scale itself. But here comes the twist. Apparently, this scale is also called the melodic major. This actually surprised me, because I did not know this until I started researching and writing for this video. It is very interesting that somebody called this scale the melodic major, and this is the scale we obtain by applying negative harmony to the melodic minor. Now, the earlier reference I can find on this name is in the work of Josef Schillinger, who called this scale melodic major in the 1930s or 40s. Schillinger got his musical education in Russia, so I wonder if in some way the Russian school to which Rimsky-Korsakov belongs to, even if it's a couple of generations earlier, I wonder if those people had an intuition about negative harmony, or maybe they knew something about it that we don't know. But again, these it's great, and it's again very nice and tidy, because again, C major scale becomes C minor and vice versa under negative harmony, harmonic major becomes harmonic minor and vice versa, melodic minor becomes melodic major and vice versa. It's great, everything fits perfectly. Or at least, this works for the main scales of the tonal system, major, natural minor, melodic minor, and the harmonic minor. Now, I would like to tell you that this happens also for exotic scales, like, for instance, the Hungarian major and minor, or the Neapolitan major and minor, but, sadly, this is not true. Either this correspondence between major and minor scales through negative harmony works only for the main scale, or it is possible that some exotic scale have been named wrongly. If, for instance, I take the Hungarian minor scale, this is C, D, E flat, F sharp, G, A flat, B. If I apply negative harmony and reorder the notes from C, I obtain C, D flat, E, F, G, A flat, B. This is not the Hungarian major scale, sadly, but this is the fifth mode of the Hungarian minor scale. The Hungarian major scale, instead, it's C, D sharp, E, F sharp, G, A, B flat. Now, we already know that the Hungarian major scale is really not a Hungarian scale, so maybe the other scale should be called the Hungarian major scale. But if I apply negative harmony to what we call the Hungarian major scale, I get C, D flat, E flat, E, G, A, B flat, and this reminds me of a strange lopsided altered scale. Either way, you can take the conclusion you want regarding the Hungarian minor, but honestly, personally, I think that I would rename this one the Hungarian major if I were to rewrite music theory from scratch. But that's just my opinion. Neapolitan scale have a similar situation. The Neapolitan minor scale is C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B. If I apply my negative harmony and reorder from C, I get C, D, E, F sharp, G, A flat, B. This looks a lot like the Hungarian minor with a major third, so we start to find an interesting connection between the Neapolitan minor and the Hungarian minor. They are close by in the negative harmony, not exactly the same. The Neapolitan major, though, it's not this, it's C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A, B, and when I apply negative harmony to it, instead I get C, D, E, F sharp, G, A flat, B flat. And this scale is an interesting hybrid, it's pretty much a mixolydian with a flat 6 and a sharp 4 at the same time. Now again, you can take any conclusion you want about how those scales relate to each other, I just find that if you spend a bit of time looking at those correspondences, you'll find a number of interesting things, and you start to see how all those scales seem to be related one way or another. So you see that the exotic scales like Hungarian major and minor and Neapolitan major and minor do not present the same nice and tidy pattern as the main scales of the tonal system, that is the major scale, natural minor, harmonic minor, and melodic minor. But other scales that are in use in music react much better to negative harmony. So for instance, if I take a diminished scale, and I'm taking the half-whole version of the diminished scale, I have C, D flat, E flat, E, F sharp, G, A, B flat. 
Now, if I flip those notes around, C becomes G, D flat becomes F sharp, E flat becomes E, E becomes E flat, F sharp becomes D flat, G becomes C, A becomes B flat, B flat becomes A, and the scale maps to itself. The negative harmony of the diminished scale, it's the diminished scale itself. This is why the scale sound neutral, because this scale is its own psychological opposite. You can make this scale sound happy or sad, elated or depressed, depending on the context in which you use it. Another interesting scale to look at is the hexatonic scale, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, B flat. If I flip this scale around using negative harmony, C becomes G, D becomes F, E becomes E flat, F sharp becomes D flat, G sharp becomes B, and B flat becomes A. What I get is a new scale that does not have the same root as before, because as you see, the note C is not in this new scale, and this is because we didn't have a perfect fifth in the original scale. But this new scale is the other hexatonic scale, meaning the hexatonic scale that does not start on C, but starts on D flat. Since there are only two possible hexatonic scales, it's pretty interesting that negative harmony maps one of the scales into the other scale. Also, notice how this second scale is precisely all the notes that are not in the original hexatonic scale. So all the notes that are missing from the original hexatonic scale are in the second hexatonic scale, and vice versa. So again, that's pretty interesting how negative harmony transforms scale in a way that makes sense. So, so far we apply negative harmony to a number of scales, but of course the natural question to ask at this point is, what about modes? What happens when we apply negative harmony to modes? I'm gonna talk about negative harmony and modes in a future video, because there is much more to say about that, and several interesting things happen there, and those things actually explain why the name negative harmony is very appropriate as opposed to many other suggestions. So, stay connected for a future video video on negative harmony and modes. And as usual, no window scales is just the first step that you have to take in order to make music with those scales. And if you want to go from just knowing the scale to be able to understand and actually make music with those scales, then I suggest you check out my course Master of the Modes, which is a complete video course about scales and mode on guitar written by guitar players for guitar player, we do all our theory straight on the fretboard. There are no piano example, no theory only example, everything is explained on the fretboard, and we go from the basic knowledge to the advanced applications until you are able to improvise using scales and modes over any possible chord progression. If you want to master your modes, you want to check out the Master of the Modes course, just click on the top right link on this video. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell, otherwise YouTube will not tell you when I put up a new video. And if you have any suggestions, any comment, any feedback for me, just write it down in the comments, I love reading from you. This is Tommaso Zillio of musictheoryforguitar.com, and until next time, enjoy!